In this video, we will talk about correlation matrix using Pearson correlation coefficient. So, uh, if you remember, uh, we discussed about uh, students marks in uh, subject A and subject D. We uh, used a um, stack bar chart or a bar chart to compare or box plot to compare these things in uh, descriptive analytics. Let us look at the same uh, data. Uh, we have uh, 60 students marks uh, in a subject A and subject B, uh, same students. Okay, So, we can uh, plot the relationship between subject A and subject B. Um, so you see that. Um, uh, student uh, who was scoring good in subject A definitely scoring good in subject B. Um, actually, I created this uh, marks with a linear relationship say 0 0.93 into uh, subject A. If you just compute uh, 0 0.93 into 65, it will come like that. So, I created uh, this marks to show there is a linear relationship. So, it is a linear relationship and it is perfect and it will be 1 like positive 1. And uh, you know there is a uh, uh, strong relation between subject A, the student who scores good in subject A that is math, they might definitely score good in science. Okay, this can be uh, established. Let us look at the uh, other example. Uh, we saw we have attendance and the midterm marks and the final marks in the uh, semester. Um, now, we have a two um, independent variable and one dependent variable that is uh, you see this is x1, x2. and one dependent variable and two independent variable. Um, we can compute the correlation between these values like uh, what is the correlation of uh, between attendance and final marks and what is the correlation of midterm marks and final marks, right. Let us look at that. So, consider column 1 is uh, attendance. So, let us um, and the midterm mark final. This matrix is created using Excel, Okay, the simple tool available in Excel can help you to do that. So, um, is there a relationship between column 2 and column 1? Yes, this two relationship x and y highly correlated 0.9. Um, is there a relationship between uh, column 1 and column 3? That is 0.84. This is uh, uh, the correlation coefficient between attendance versus final map, final marks. If the student uh, have more attendance, uh, it is highly likely scores uh, better score compared to students who has low attendance score. And uh, so, this is the self correlation, you know, um, like attendance versus attendance, uh, midterm marks versus midterm marks final marks. So, it's obviously, it is 1 if you do the self correlation and uh, ignore that, um, ignore the diagonal part of this matrix. Um, Let us look at that uh, column 3 versus column 2. What is the correlation coefficient of um, midterm marks versus final marks? It indicates 0.8, it says if the students score good in midterm or like uh, in a midterm or uh, mid sem exams he definitely will score uh, good in the final exams. So, that is a final exam score. So, this is the uh, correlation matrix which tells you the x1 and y1, x2 and y1. What is this is the correlation between attendance and mid sum. This may not be correct uh, you know um, because the mid sum would have done uh, till the uh, first half of semester, attendance would have, have data till the final uh, just day before the exam or you do not know when you have attendance maybe first half of semester or you have attendance um, just one month before the final exams. But given that assumption okay, you have attendance till only the mid sum uh, time, attendance and mid term marks has a high correlation you know say 0 0.9. Okay, now, there is a question comes in a lot of questions right. If I want to create, um, if I want to create a simple uh, classifier should I use both x1 and x2 to predict y1 or should I use any one of them? It is a very interesting question. The reason is uh, you see there is a high correlation between attendance and midterm marks because uh, 0.9 is very high correlation. If the student has more attendance definitely has a more midterm marks. If it is less attendance or less uh, marks in the midterm exam. 
So, there is no point in picking both variables for our research uh, for our creating the uh, classifier or prediction predictive analytics methods. Instead, we have to pick one of them. The general approach is we use uh, the one which has highest correlation with the dependent variable that is um, column 3 uh, with column 1 that is attendance. Since See, it's very simple. Since um, attendance and the midterm marks are highly correlated, right? So, since they are correlated, we can pick one of these features for the uh, classification of the index. Which one to do? Um, that depends on how much they are strongly correlated with the final map score. I would choose. Uh, so, I would choose the attendance because attendance 1 is strongly correlated with the minus score compared to the uh, midterm marks. Midterm marks also good, it is strong 0.8 compared to 0.85, I might pick 0.84. So, I will choose uh, so attendance to predict final marks, right. So, that is what I will try to do. Uh, reason is uh, I will uh, I will try to use the best uh, uh, independent variable which is correlated with the independent variable for creating classifier. For these two values you know uh, it is easy to predict. For example, since there is a like correlation between attendance and final marks it is simple you just have to uh, create a simple if and if, if fails condition or some filtering uh, criteria to figure out whether student will pass the exam or not pass the exam or student will uh, uh, how much student the score using regression or something like that. Consider you have uh, more than uh, uh, say 2 that is uh, you have uh, x1 up to x10 like you have assignment score, your midterm marks, the, uh, uh, the number of the attendance, the, uh, the engagement level in the class, the uh, responses in the discussion forum, you have a lot of other information available from the classroom environment or some other learning environment. If you have that kind of information then uh, having all these features to predict is uh, maybe a problem uh, if you want to reduce the computation time. So, you can use the do the do the so you can uh, do the feature selection algorithm. Uh, one of the algorithm is doing the correlation between independent variable with uh, a dependent variable then picking the strong correlated one and also ignoring the uh, values which is highly correlated like the uh, the independent variables were highly correlated can be moved out. This is a one technique which is used very um, widely some time ago. However, um, due to the advanced uh, classifiers, we do not uh, really care about uh, this um, uh, how to select these uh, features to predict y1. Instead, we use um, uh, other techniques uh, which are uh, which are available in the tools. We might see them in when you are using the tools which help you to pick the right features for prediction. But still it is very good practice if you want to uh, go for prediction try the correlation method with the uh, correlation matrix that might help you. Also the correlation matrix if you have say 10 columns might help you uh, to provide the relationship between each independent variables and how it is related how this uh, variables can be predicted using the uh, values given in the correlation matrix. So, I would recommend if you have more than uh, one variable, uh, one independent variable, go ahead and complete the correlation matrix to get a sense of the data and see how they are related, or say any linear relation between these two variables. You saw correlation matrix in a previous slide, and I hope you understood that. Let us do a small activity. Given the four plots, you know, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and x4, y4, given these four plots, um, can you guess the correlation coefficient of? these charts like uh, chart 1, chart 2, chart 3, chart 4. Can you guess this? Also um, if you guess it uh, what is the inference you are making it out of this uh, correlation coefficient? You no need to do any calculation or something just guess it uh, just try to guess what will be the value. This data is from uh, paper. Uh, so, this is the cited uh, paper. So, all of them have a same correlation coefficient uh, you might have uh, guessed it correctly if it is good. Um, all of them have a same co correlation coefficient why? In the last video we talked about drawbacks of Pearson correlation right. Uh, this actually uh, example gives you all the details of that. 
let us look at it. Uh, the first one um, x1 versus uh, x2 it is scattered around the uh, uh, linear relationship. So, there is a point a one six relationship it is ok it is point a one six good. This is not a linear relationship right the x might be a linear, but y is non linear relationship with the x. Still it is correlation coordinate at point 86 because there is a line which can fit all these lines, uh, these points. So, here the drawback of Pearson correlation that non linear relationship is not identified here right. If it is a good correlation coefficient, you should be able to identify non linear also. But uh, unfortunately, there is no uh, any metric which identifies this non linear uh, this kind of uh, non-linear relationship uh, very accurately. Here the correlation if you remove this particular point for example, if I remove this point there will be a line it will be exact positive 1. Because of one outlier only one outlier the value is uh, less 0.816. So, the Pearson correlation coefficient is sensitive to the outlier ok. How sensitive that is defined explained in this particular figure look at this figure and uh, if you remove this outlier absolutely there is no correlation between x and y it is 0. There is no correlation coefficient right it is not increasing it is just simple 0. It's because of this outlier this outlier is in a very um, because of this outlier. Uh, the line connecting these two uh, is perfectly matching because this value is high and this is good the value is 0 0.816. So, this tells you the Pearson correlation coefficient is sensitive to a outlier this tells you how much sensitive it is and this tells you Pearson correlation coefficient is uh, does not consider the non-linear relationship. So, that is the typical figure which uh, explains the Pearson correlation coefficient also its drawbacks. So, in this video we saw what is correlation matrix and uh, we saw a plot which explains uh, the drawbacks of Pearson correlation coefficient. Thank you.